Hi everyone, my name is Narcy and today I'm here to tell you something completely different from what I normally do, which is nursing videos. And what I want to share with you is that I've tried 42 London, I did the piscine there and I've noticed that there is nothing really about 42 London here on YouTube and I wanted to share with you my experience, how uh, if you're thinking about it, what kind of things can you expect and um, tell you a little bit more about 42 School London, the concept, why did I decided to try it out, you know, what was my day-to-day -day look like in the piscine and uh, what kind of the outcome did I got? Did I drown or did I swim? You have to stay tuned until the end to figure it out. And the kind of reflections and lessons learned that I bring and some tips for you if you're thinking about starting out the, the machine. But before I really carry on, I would just like to ask a big, big favor. 99% of you that look at my videos don't really subscribe. And it would be a huge help if you could help me subscribe so we can reach at least 200, the next 200 subscribers. And hopefully by the end of the year, 1000 subscribers. Can you help me out? A call 42 or school 42, um, or simply 42, is a private, non profit computer programming school created and funded by the French billionaire Xavier Nil co-owner of the French uh, telecommunications company Liad, with several partners including Nicolas Sariac, previous director general of the Epitech School in France, and it first opened 10 years ago in 2013. The school name is a reference of the science fiction book The Hitler's Guide to the Galaxy, written by the British author Douglas Adams, where 42 is kind of the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe and everything. So what is the vision? What they wanted to bring is a tuition-free school which encapsulated P2P learning with 24-7 access and kind of learning by doing. Tuition free because um, they wanted to make sure that the school was accessible to everyone, everyone would be able to study even though they couldn't afford um, a degree. To be learning, the school really doesn't have any professors or kind of traditional classes and kind of instead uses a project-based and peer-to-peer -peer learning model uh, where students learn from working on evaluating other people's projects and participating in rushes. And it has a very inclusive admission. The admission is open to everyone from ages 18 to 60, 70, doesn't really matter. And there is really no formal, formal academic uh, prerequisites. So you might not have a degree, you might only have, um, you know, high school or secondary school and you still can um, can come and participate and um, but you really have to pass a series of online tests and the intensive month long coding and logic challenge which I did the machine uh, known as the machine and um, it's 24 7 access the school is open 24 7 seven days a week and it gives the students the kind of flexibility to work at their own pace according to their own schedules. And it's kind of a way of learning by doing. The curriculum really focus on coding and digital innovation, really emphasizing the kind of practical skills and hands-on experience over theory. It starts from basics and really covers a variety in fields of computer programming, such as web development, graphics, artificial intelligence, and more. And since it was established in Paris, the model uh, has been replicated in several other locations around the world, such as Fremont, California, which already closed, and other locations, France, Russia, Belgium, the Netherlands, Morocco, Finland, Brazil, Romania, Japan, Canada, South Korea, Indonesia, Lisbon, Porto. So the idea is really to form a network of schools that adhere to the original principles of 42, fostering a way to teach and learn computer science globally. And also another point was the diversity. They really wanted to make it accessible and because there, are, there is a huge demand in the market for technological skills, uh, this was a way for students that didn't have the possibility of going to uh, a university or traditional ways of learning uh, that they could find the opportunities. Although the schools are embedded within a network, 
be careful because even if you apply for a London school you and you get in and you do the machine, you get the core. If you then want to transfer to Lisbon, you can't just transfer like that. You will have to redo the machine unless you're already doing the specialization. So just be aware of those kind of tricks that the school has and that may restrict you if you're thinking about doing a machine in one country and then do the core in another country because that will not work. There is really no certificates of schools. I think the French school has already a master's degree certificate, uh, but there is really no certificate whatsoever. Um, they just expect you to uh, kind of learn by doing and have the technical ability and you don't need a degree for that. Um, school 42 London, you might not see things around because the school is quite new. The first machine was in February, I've done the second machine which was in June and the third machine will be in October. Um, it's still early stages. Um, but that's why I'm sharing this with you so you know uh, and you know what to expect and at least I share my own experience different people might have different experience so I hope others can share theirs so you can have a, a different overview of things um, who funds the London school I'm not really sure I think different schools are funded by different companies uh, different organizations so you really have to see everything is kind of very kept the secret, very not very transparent on the way they do things. Um, uh, the business model, I know that is an NGO, but there is certainly some business, business model behind. Um, so it's a little bit hidden. Even the criteria to choose and pick people is a little bit hidden. They will not tell you what's the criteria to get into the school. So just be prepared to, if you go into the school, to not know exactly what's the criteria to pass. I mean, if you have everything 100% and very good grades, you certainly probably will pass uh, unless something went very wrong. Uh, but you know, there are certain things that they don't tell you about, but I think it's important for me to share this with you. So if you're the kind of person that likes to know the criteria of everything, uh, you're going in a little bit of a situation of a hidden situation and you probably don't know what they, 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 they want from you. Um, but you know, uh, it's up to you if you want to give it a try and see if this is for you or not. Um, and why did I want to do the 42 school anyway? Um, for me, um, I'm doing this kind of gap year. I do some shifts in ITU every now and then. But I, I really wanted to just give this year out just to explore things that I always wanted to explore. Um, I wanted to learn more about finance and business. I wanted to try and set up my business as well. So I wanted to um, set it up, but also learn along the way, test a few ideas, see if they work. Um, but also because um, I know that I have a very unconventional uh, background. So my background is in nursing and public health. But what drew me to this was because two things. Uh, one was the data tons that I've done um, with the MIT. Um, and the other one was I really wanted to build my minimal viable product. Uh, and I thought this is a good, good way. So in terms of the data tons, I've started to do data tons with um, um, people from MIT and work across multidisciplinary teams with mathematicians, programmers, clinicians. And I kind of, my role has always been an analytical translator. Why? Because I could understand research, I could understand the clinical side, and I also could understand the kind of results of the, the programming results. What really fascinated me about that was the fact that I understood that because I have a clinical background, I understand the problems. I can put those problems into research questions, understand which variables to use. Because I have my public health background, this allows me to understand how to frame a problem, how to build a problem, the limitations of building a, pro a problem is, or solution to that specific problem, and also interpret the results. Because what I didn't realize is that sometimes people know how to program, but then they don't know how to interpret the results. So I thought I had a very fair advantage and fair advantages to other people. But what I didn't know how to do was actually coding. So I, I said to myself, when I have a gap year, I'm just gonna test it out. And here in the UK, uh, we are in 2023, there's loads of opportunities for you to test out things. Like there's loads of boot camps in, um, you know, data science, full stack developers, cybersecurity, um, marketing where you can do for free 
Um, so I wanted to test out um, the data science bootcamp, which I did, to learn project-based programming, so I just knew the basics. And it was very good. I really did a lot of projects. I, I felt like I was learning a lot. Uh, although because it's fully intensive uh, and although they they help you with the background knowledge it's very fast paced so you probably will have to go back and forth once you finish the bootcamp to understand thoroughly um, the reason behind the algorithms so you can understand best um, and not just doing by doing but actually you understand and critical thing um, the only thing I felt that uh, was missing out from that bootcamp was that I learn how to put pieces together from um, to build a model for data science, but I actually didn't learn how to program well. Um, so I thought, okay, maybe let's give it a try at School 42. I really wanted to learn to see the, the difference in pedagogy that they, they, they talk about, this peer-to-peer -peer learning, this kind of different way of learning. And I wanted to test it out, their methods, the school, uh, and I also wanted to kind of understand their interperial drive because I they have the session F in, in France. So, you know, I wanted to build my business. I thought maybe it would be good to just a good environment to start and try out and maybe, you know, meet co-founders, meet more technical people. And really what I wanted to learn is more that I didn't never wanted to be a kind of a, um, a fancy hardcore of software developer never in my life what I wanted to learn is the principles the basics so I know how to put pieces together if I want to build something so I know what I need and that was really my core goal and um, and then you know because there's not a lot of information out there about the machine itself and um, I thought well I kind of have to try it out for myself to test it and see if it's for me and also because I was really, I've been discussing with a lot of people from the field whether do you really need to learn C to be, to learn the basics and, and, and learn better because some people argue that if you learn C you can learn anything while some people are saying to me no just focus on Python uh, just focus on learning the principles of the basic language and you'll be fine so I thought I would just give it a try and see is this le learning C first and taking more time is the pathway for me or not. Uh, and that was the reason why I went to 42. Uh, my experience in coding, as I said, it's a little bit limited because I only did this three months. I did a few online courses of introduction to Python. Um, I haven't done any course in logic at all. So I, my, my knowledge was a little bit limited, but I knew a little bit of the principles but I wouldn't say that I'd be a fantastic programmer or coder. So I just went with the minimal stuff um, and I really didn't much, didn't prepare because I was doing other things and I didn't have enough time to then concentrate on this. Um, but other than that, that was it. So my journey to, my journey to school 42. So how was it? So I did, so the first, hi there, probably wondering how was my experience at school 42? So stay tuned and follow the link for the chapter two of this whole experience where you can find out more about my experience at School 42, a little bit more about the different learning experience that I had throughout my career and what's the difference between those and 42 and a little bit more about maybe perhaps you can find the outcome here of uh, the results of my machine. So stay tuned.